Gucci is a renowned name in the world of luxury leather goods, fashion, watches and jewelry. The dynamism, creativity, artistic aesthetic and detailing in its products represent the pinnacle of craftsmanship. Designers see the luxury brand as the epitome of excellence, while patrons desire to flaunt its products. But there is also family drama behind the brand. Let's watch this video till the end to know Gucci history. Guccio Gucci founded the famous fashion house in Florence, Italy in 1921. Before starting his namesake label, Gucci worked as a porter at the Savoy Hotel in London. Inspired by ritzy hotel guests, he returned home to work for a luggage franzi, and took up leather craftsmanship before launching his own business. Guccio sold leather products to the wealthiest in the early years of the company. He also made saddles for horses from some of the finest Italian leather. In fact, many of Gucci's modern-day designs are inspired by the early equestrian equipment it made. As its fame grew, England's upper class started taking note of the Gucci brand. Among the many things that Gucci subsequently added to its portfolio were silk goods, leather shoes, and handbags. In 1935, the League of Nations embargo against Italy harmed businesses in the country, and Gucci was no exception. But Guccio found a way to replace the imported leather and other materials with a locally made print set on woven canapa or hemp, that came from Naples. The print that Gucci created comprised a series of small, with interconnected diamonds set in a dark background. It became Gucci's first signature design which was used in its highly successful range of suitcases. In 1938, a year before the start of World War II, Gucci's sons, Aldo, Vasco, and Rodolfo, began working for the company, and its reputation continued to grow. Gucci opened another store in Rome's Via Condotti at the same year. The company would expand its footprint across the globe in later years. The iconic Gucci bamboo bag was created in 1947, two years after the war. While they were looking for new materials, the innovative Gucci artisans discovered that Japanese bamboo perfectly fits into their remarkable ideas for alternatives. Gucci used its patented burnished bamboo for bag handles and created a timeless product that defined and solidified its image as a luxury label. By 1951, Gucci had embraced its famous green-red-green stripe detail. The 50s were also a great time for the expansion of Gucci stores. Rodolfo Gucci opened another one in Milan in 1951 before expanding to the U.S. two years later. Shortly before Gucci o Gucci's death in 1953, a Gucci store opened at the Savoy Plaza Hotel in New York City as a tribute to his time as a porter. The founder passed away just 15 days later at the age of 71. In the years following Gucci's death, the brand continued to see success thanks to his sons. Celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor were photographed carrying bamboo-handled bags. In 1961, after Jacqueline Kennedy was spotted carrying a Gucci bag, the fashion house renamed it the Jackie. Around the same time, it created a logo that is still used today, the famous double G. Grace Kelly, the Princess of Monaco, had an influence on Gucci's designs as well. When she purchased a bamboo-handled bag in 1966, Rodolfo Gucci gifted her a floral scarf made especially for her. The pattern was a commissioned illustration by famed artist Vittorio Acronero and later named the Flora Print. Among the other several prominent women who have since the 1960s sported Gucci products are Audrey Hepburn and Princess Diana. For the next few decades, Gucci underwent several major changes, as well as some drama. Guccio's grandchildren were working at the company by the early 80s and the family was feuding about who would be in control. Eventually, Rodolfo's son, Maurizio, took over, pushing his cousins and Uncle Aldo out of the company. In 1989, a holdings company, InvestCorp, acquired nearly half of Gucci. Bergdorf, Goodman's president Don Mello, and its head of accessories Richard Lambertson, were then brought in to give the brand a much-needed boost. 
Maurizio married Patrizia Reggiani in 1972. The couple lived the high life, throwing lavish parties and going on luxurious vacations with their two daughters. According to Patrizia, she used to advise Maurizio on business matters but when the latter inherited his father's share, he stopped heeding her advice. Amid the rising tensions with his cousins, Maurizio walked out of the marriage and the two got divorced in 1990. However, Maurizio couldn't manage the business and in 1993, Investcorp gained complete control of the company thus bringing an end to the Gucci family's stake in the business. In Hook the House of Gucci, a sensational story of murder, madness, glamour and greed, journalist Sarah Gay Fortin quoted Patrizia as saying, I pushed him so hard he became president of Gucci. I was social, he didn't like to socialize. I was always out. He was always in the house. I was the representative of Maurizio Gucci, and that was enough. He was like a child, a thing called Gucci that had to be washed and dressed. On March 27, 1995, Maurizio was shot dead on the steps of his Milan office. He was 46. For the next two years, no one had a clue who shot Maurizio. Then one day the Italian police got a tip off about Patrizia's involvement and they laid a trap. Phones were wiretapped, evidence collected and the police arrested Patrizia, her friend Pina Arima, and three others including the hitman. All five were held guilty of Maurizio's murder. Before his murder, Maurizio was planning to marry a woman named Paolo Franchi. In court, Arima revealed that Patrizia didn't like the idea of losing her status money and power to Franchi once the latter became Maurizio's wife. The marriage would have meant that Patrizia's alimony from Maurizio would have been have to 860,000 US dollars. Patrizia said that it was amount for a bowl of lentils. She had paid 300,000 US dollars to Orima but maintained that it was not for murder. However, out of her intense hatred for Maurizio, she told the judge, he wasn't worth a lira more. She was sentenced to 29 years in prison, which was later reduced by three years. But Patrizia was released after serving 18 years in 2016. The real change occurred in 1990, when a wildly talented young designer named Tom Ford entered the picture. Initially, he oversaw Gucci's ready-to-wear collection, but became the fashion house's creative director in 1994. In fall 1995 collection and sleek, Ford designed a massive commercial success, and celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow, Jennifer Lopez, and Madonna were all photographed wearing his pieces on the red carpet. In 1999, the iconic Jackie bag was relaunched with a few updates, quickly becoming the new must-have item that year. In the late 90s, LVMH slowly started purchasing shares of the company, However, before the company took over completely, investor Francois Pinault, of Pinault Printemps Redoubt, or PPR, strategically became the major stakeholder. PPR would later be renamed Curing in 2013, and Gucci remains a part of the conglomerate today. The years following Tom Ford's departure showed significant change for the company. As noted by Business of Fashion, in 2006, Giannini relaunch of the Flora pattern, instead of focusing on the double G logo, proved massively successful. In 2008, Gucci aired its first ever TV campaign for the Gucci by Gucci scent, which was directed by David Lynch. Gucci by Gucci Poor Hum, Giannini's first men's scent, launched with campaign star James Franco that same year. The now iconic Flora by Gucci fragrance was launched in 2009. Alessandro Michele, who had already devoted 12 years to the brand, was then announced as the new creative director. The appointment of the relatively unknown accessories designer came as a shock to many within the industry. In his first move as creative director, he helped design an entirely new menswear collection in less than a week. His first women's swear collection debuted a month later on the Milan runway, and was an instant success. In the years after his appointment, Michele turned the luxury house into the printed, sequined, oversized glasses loving vision that we know today. He has not only helped Gucci remain at the forefront of design, 
fashion, luxury and style but also drawn younger customers to the brand and propelled Gucci's profits manifold. He reintroduced the GG logo as a central design on products including loafers. Innovations such as hand-painted logo bags and fur-lined slippers have been made under his watch. In 2019, Gucci relaunched its makeup line, Gucci Beauty, and introduced its first unisex fragrance. Most recently, he announced in May 2020 that Gucci is embracing seasonless fashion and leaving the structure of Fashion Week behind. It will also be cutting down on its shows going from five to just two per year. The following year, he declared that the label will be holding only two fashion shows instead of five every year. On the 100th anniversary of Gucci in 2021, he unveiled the Aria collection in partnership with Balenciaga. For the collection, he drew inspiration from Gucci's most iconic products and designs, including flora print, bamboo bag, equestrian-inspired pieces and Tom Ford's classics. Well, that's all history of Gucci for one century. If you like this video please give it thumbs and share. Thank you for watching.